Hi, and welcome to Lunchtime Prayer Power. I'm Deidre Banks. Today, we're praying for a summer of revival for the children and the education mountain. So what is revival? You may have heard this term and I want to talk about this a little bit with you on today. And I love this discussion or excerpt from Got Questions. And so I'm just going to read this to you because it's a great summary of revival. And then we're going to talk about some specific signs of revival in just a minute. Revival refers to a spiritual reawakening from a state of dormancy or stagnation in the life of a believer. It encompasses the resurfacing of a love for God an appreciation of God's holiness, a passion for his word and his church, a convicting awareness of personal and corporate sin, a spirit of humility, and a desire for repentance and growth and righteousness. Revival invigorates and sometimes deepens a believer's faith, opening his or her eyes to the truth in a fresh new way. I'm going to stop here. This is some great stuff to pray for. If you are an intercessor, I believe you are. You're joining us. You're an intercessor. These are things that we can pray for the church. A spirit of humility, a passion for the word and his church, convicting awareness. These are less like prayer points. Boom, boom, boom. Because these are signs of revival. We can pray for these things to come forth. Amen. We can pray for these things to come forth. And these are in the word of God. We're going to take a look at some scripture from the early church. We know that the early church was in revival. They saw members added to the church daily. Amen. We're going to take a look at that in just a minute. I'm going to read you some more of this got questions answer about revival. So revival, it generally involves the connotation of a fresh start with a clean slate, marking a new beginning of a life lived in obedience to God. Revival breaks the charm and power of the world, which blinds the eyes of men and generates both the will and power to live in the world, but not of the world. Amen. So the evidence of revival is changed lives. This is a just reading from Got Questions. Great movements towards righteousness, evangelism, and social justice occur. Believers are once again spending time in prayer and reading and obeying God's word. Believers begin to powerfully use their spiritual gifts. There is confession of sin and repentance. I wanted to just read you that because it's a great synopsis of revival. I want to take you through some specific examples. Some of these that you heard about in that summary from the questions, but I want to take you through these kind of bullet points. According to Northwest University, some of the signs of revival There's 13. I'm not going to read you all 13, but I want to read you some of these. A burden for the lost is one sign of revival. Increase in the number of salvations. We saw this in the early church in Acts 2, 41 and 47. We also saw a burden for the lost in the early church in Acts 2, 40. I'm not going to read you all the uh, scripture references, but Acts is where most of them are coming from in regards to the revival in the early church. Amen. A surge in calling to ministry and missions. I'm going to read you this excerpt here. So during revival, people sense God's calling to gospel service, whether in vocational ministry or in greater consecration of their daily work in what others would see as secular settings. Amen. So that we're consecrating ourselves as a church, as a body of believers. God may call you specifically off to consecrate yourself. And there's a call of God on the church to consecrate ourselves. Amen. But a surge in callings to ministry and missions. Also, another example is the manifest presence of God. Amen. Is a sign of revival. Greater generosity toward the work of God. Amen. The people are feeling more of a call to give generously. Amen. Greater frequency of corporate gatherings for worship and prayer and the word. I'm going to stop and mention this. You know, the early church, they put all the possessions together and there was no need or lack among them because they used their resources to come together and meet the needs of the people. Now, greater frequency, you said that of corporate gatherings. Increased fellowship among Christians is another sign of revival. Favor with the community is another example. I want to read you Acts 2, 46 through 47, because we're going to see this in the early church. Several things come forth from scripture that we saw or mentioned previously that I mentioned were signs of revival. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. So eating together, fellowshipping together, continuing to meet. Verse 47, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. 
favor in the community. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved, mass salvations. Amen. So these are signs of revival. So we want to pray on today for revival to spring forth with the children that they would have a love for God and that there would be an encountering of God with the children, that he would draw them unto himself. Amen. What a powerful thing to see revival amongst the children. We're seeing that on different college campuses. We're seeing evidence of revivals spring forth. And just believe it's such a mighty time for the children, even the grade school and the younger children to catch hold of this. Amen. And adults as well. We're going to pray today, though, for the children. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God of revival. You love us so much and you desire to spend time with us. You desire an intimate relationship. You want to walk with us. You want to war alongside of us. You're our rear guard and our front guard. Just as you walk with Moses, you want to walk with us and you walk with Joshua. We pray on today, Father God, that you would encounter these precious children with your love, Lord, that you would reveal yourself in a greater way to them. You love them so much and you're blessing them. You're pouring on gifts. You've given them gifts a purpose and a calling to walk out this life with. We pray right now, Father God, that you would help them pour out a spirit of humility on these precious children and help them, Lord, to turn from their wicked ways and turn towards you. Give them a spirit of repentance, Father God, and help them to hunger and spiritually Uh, desire righteousness, Lord. The righteousness comes from you. We pray, Father God, for mass salvations of these younger children, mass baptisms, Father God, that they would be baptized in the Holy Spirit, that they would walk forth in your power, that they would lay hands on the sick, that they would cast out demons, Father God. Help them, Lord, to walk in your way. Now, I want to stop here because children do need to be trained. Yes, God can give them the power. If they're believers, they're really equipped Let me say it differently. They have the power. Equipping is going to come from being able to learn about it. But they're going to have the power inside of them because there's no junior junior Holy Holy Ghost. Excuse me. So the Holy Ghost that's inside of a child can still give them the power to cast out a demon. But there's training that's involved to cast out demons. Right. But the power is inside of them. So nothing that they're trained in this. They're able to walk in this. They're able to do that. But they would need to be training because there's a lot that comes with that because we want to be honoring what God is doing in the earth. We want to be able to move in that in decency and in order. Amen. So the way there's, there's training and deliverance. There's training for deliverance ministers. Again, a, a disciple of Christ can cast out a demon because Mark 6 and 17 tells us that, right? These signs shall follow them that believe. In thy name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So it doesn't say this is the signs that will follow adult believers. No, this is a sign that follows believers. So the children have the power inside of them to do that, but they need to be equipped in how to walk through those things as the Lord wills. Not every child is going to be spiritually mature or going to be ready to handle that, but it's to know that the power is inside of them. The power is inside of them to lay hands on the sick. The power is inside of them to speak with new tongues. There's power is inside of them. They drink anything deadly. It will not harm them. The the power is inside of them to cast out devils. And so as the child is ready, we want to allow them to walk in these as they're ready. We want to pressure them, but it's to know that it's available to them. Amen. It's available. And so that God can move in that way in their lives. We're not going to try and make the children do these things, but we want to know that it's possible. It's just possible. So if you see your child, it's possible for them to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. It's possible for them to walk in these things because these are for believers. And if they're a believer in Jesus Christ, they can walk in these things. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the revival that's coming forth with these children. We thank you, Father God, for the growth and righteousness. We ask you, Lord, to open their eyes to see the truth in a new way. We pray right now, Father God, for a fresh start, a clean slate for them, a new beginning for them. Help them to live a life of obedience. Help them to be slaves to obedience, Father God. Your word says we're no longer slaves to sin as we're born again believers. So we pray that the children would not be slaves to sin, but that they would be children of righteousness. We pray also, Father God, for a wee awakening, a 
awaken them up in this hour, Father God. Awake the sleeping children, Lord, that they would wake up to righteousness, Father God. Give them a passion for your word. Give them a hunger for your word and for righteousness for your church, Lord. Let church be a place of refreshing and revival and help us as adults to teach the children rightly to divide the word of truth. Help us, Lord, to be spending our time and our word ourselves so that we can rightly divide it and we can teach the children how to rightly divide it. Help us, Lord, to be good stewards of the anointing you've given us and to have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness ourselves. Help us to be Focus on Jesus Christ, Lord, to keep our eyes on you and you keep us in perfect peace. The early church was adding to the church daily, Father God. We pray that there would be many believers, salvations goes forth. And not that the children, but also of the adults too, Father God. We pray, Lord, for increased fellowship among believers, true worship and fellowship, not just about religious meetings, Lord but about you, Father God, that we would put away the religious spirits, that we would put away the religious activities, but that we would be doing things in spirit and in truth. We don't want to be denying the power of the power that you have, Father God. We don't want to be denying the power that you have, Lord. We want to be focused on you. Help us, Father God, to focus on you in a greater way. We pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit mightily and fill up these children with your Holy Spirit right now. We pray, Lord, for a passion for prayer for these children, Father God, that they would be hungry to pray, that they would desire to pray. Wake them up, Father God. Strengthen them. Some of them are already mighty intercessors praying for their parents, praying for their teachers, praying for their friendships. You know, my youngest son is a a passion for prayer. He has a passion uh, for people of, of certain religions too. He just, he's like, mom, I don't understand why they're, they're doing these things. Father God, I, I'm concerned. They're, they're not able to eat for so many days and, and doing these things. And the, the, their God is not our God. So he's not giving them the strength. And so my child was just concerned. I said, you know, pray for them, you know, Lord, help them, strengthen them, open their eyes, Father God, bless their family. And just teaching him to pray for them because we can't, that's the, the, what they know right now, but God can open those children's eyes and as my son could be a light to them being loving and kind, not pushy, but humble and caring. Amen. Being a light. And so your children, and I'm not bragging on my child. I'm just saying that that's an example of that. When your children are doing a mighty thing, you're raising them up in the way of the Lord. They're, some of them are speaking so much at school. We don't even have an idea or they're speaking on the playground. You know, one of the greatest things that we can do in them is instill good character. Amen. Character comes from endurance, but meaning we're teaching them the way of the Lord. And so they know what the standard is. Yes, they're going to miss it just as we miss it, but that they're learning the standard of righteousness. They're learning what God says is right and the truth. They're learning to walk with him and the grace of God. That is not about how many things we get right or wrong, but that our heart is turned towards him and that he helps us, that he gives us the grace to walk out this life. He empowers us to do the work that he's called us to do. And he also, it gives us grace to walk out this life. Amen. He gives us grace to walk out this life. He gives us the grace of salvation. He is a good God. And so I, I'm going to encourage you to continue to pray for the children. I love the children. I'm so grateful, not just for my own children, but for this generation rising up that's changing lives. Amen. There's a great movement coming forth. And we want to just believe God to bring forth the social justice that we talked about as a sign of revival. And that God loves the oppressed. He's not turning a blind eye to the oppression that's going on in our world. But he knows that he's greater than this oppression. And so we shouldn't focus on the oppression, but we focus on our victory. Our victory comes from God. Amen. We stand in a place of victory. So we're not victims, we're victors. So no matter what the enemy tries to do to us, we are overcomers. And we need to know that we are forgiven. We're overcomers. Amen. And we're going to walk in the power of Jesus Christ and to teach that to these precious children. So they come out here warring. They come out here battling. They come out here in strength. They come out here winning and overcoming. They're not looking at the color of their skin saying, how can I do this? But they're believing God because in Christ Jesus, their skin is the same color as everyone else. Amen. It's not about that because there's neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female in Jesus Christ. So they're united in Christ and they're not speaking things of division. They're speaking things of love. Amen. And so we're helping them walk out this life by teaching them the word of God and helping them to war and stand on the word. One of the greatest things someone said to me is that I can't be everywhere my children are, but God can. And so by teaching them to pray, by teaching them who God is, they're always protected. 
Amen. Because God is a protector. Psalm 91 is a, is a promise. Amen. We stand on the word of God. We got to teach our children that because no matter what happens, if some sort of opposition comes, if some sort of a thing comes to their school, they can pray. They can pray. They can pray and they can believe God. You might say, well, oh, I know someone was at this uh, thing and they prayed and this happened. God is a good God. We don't understand all things, but I know one thing. My God is good. He's a protector and he loves us. And we stand on that. No matter what stuff looks like, we, get, we teach our children to pray. We teach them to war. We teach them to walk out the purpose that God has for them. And they're going to go far. They're going to run. They're going to go farther than we can ever imagine. But we have to teach them the way of the Lord. And we need to start now training up these children the way that they should go. Amen. And I know that you are. You're teaching your children. Amen. You're teaching them the word of God. You're teaching them. You love them. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thanks so much for coming today to pray for the children and for revival to come upon the children. Be blessed.